Last month, China made headlines around the world for announcing it had built a fully functioning 1,500 room hospital in just five days. This remarkable feat of engineering and logistics was executed in response to a COVID-19 surge in Nangong, a city in Hebei province. It recalled a time earlier in the pandemic, when workers in Wuhan erected a 1,000 bed hospital in a little over a week. Right now, even in the teeth of the coronavirus, China's energetic builders are not only creating hospitals at breakneck pace, but moving startlingly quickly in the sphere of high-speed rail, bridge building and skyscraper construction. So today we're putting on our hard hats and asking exactly how does China build so fast? China's modern economic boom is little short of dazzling. Ballooning national prosperity has lifted hundreds of millions of people out of poverty, urbanized its citizenry faster than any other civilization in human history, and created some pretty awesome infrastructure projects along the way. Not least the world's largest dam, the world's biggest airport, and a veritable forest of shiny new skyscrapers. Most strikingly, the People's Republic has spent over $300 billion on almost 40,000 kilometers of high-speed rail infrastructure, putting it light years ahead of every other country on Earth and proving its commitment to a sustainable public transport-centric future for its 1.5 billion citizens. Not bad when you consider that project only really got started in 2008. So how are they doing it so fast? Part of the answer lies in awesome technology. Take the catchily named SLJ-900, colloquially referred to as the Iron Monster. Designed by the Shijiazhong Railway Design Institute and manufactured by Beijing's Wow Joint Machinery Company, it represents nothing short of a paradigm shift in railway construction. China's often rugged landscape means that much of its rail network requires raising up on bridges or viaducts. Traditionally, these viaducts are constructed using heavy-duty cranes, which painstakingly lift narrow wedges of span into place. The Iron Monster takes a rather different approach. Rolling along already completed bridge sections on its 64 wheels, it proceeds to slide great long sections of new bridge out over the void to be laid onto the next pier. This span is then secured, after which the monster rolls back to collect the next section, fabricated trackside in a temporary factory that moves alongside the project. Not only does it look amazing, but this 580-ton, 91-meter-long beast helps the railway get built faster and more cost-effectively than more traditional techniques. A similar, even bigger cousin of the Iron Monster, known as Kunlun, is currently building the colossal 9.1-mile Meizhou Bay Bridge in China's southeast. Kunlun is capable of shifting vast 40-meter-long, 1,000-ton box girders. The sheer heft of these almighty machines makes them significantly heavier than any train the viaducts will ever be expected to carry, which is probably quite reassuring from a safety point of view. When finished, trains will hurtle along these tracks at anywhere from 120 to 220 miles per hour. But the Chinese aren't stopping there. They're currently testing a prototype maglev train around Shanghai, which could well be zooming commuters to work at around 350 miles an hour by the year 2025. Tunneling is another field in which the Chinese excel, using machines reportedly dreamt up with the help of German freelance engineering consultants. These boring machines, which are anything but boring, burrow as far as 10 meters a day at a unit cost of just $10 million per kilometer. That might sound expensive until you learn that a kilometer of tunnel in the US will typically set you back a cool $50 million. However, on China's rail network, as on its lightning-quick hospital building program, construction technology is only part of the answer. The nature of China's political and regulatory framework is, in truth, probably the most significant factor in how things get built so quickly there. Compare the process of building a high-speed railway in China with a similar project in any typical Western country. In the West, before a single meter of track is laid, detailed feasibility studies are commissioned to work out whether or not the line is likely to be profitable. If not, there's very little chance it will get built. In China, the railways are funded by the government. Much of the network, especially in less populous regions of the country, consistently fails to make money. For instance, the Zhengzhou Xi'an High Speed Railway ran just 30 trains in 2016, making a multi billion dollar loss. Other factors, such as harsh climate conditions on the line from Guiyang Guangzhou, cause eye wateringly high maintenance costs that all but obliterate profits. No problem when the cashed-up central government in Beijing is footing the bill. High-speed lines in Western countries are often delayed by years, or at least expensively rerouted whenever environmentally sensitive habitats are seen to be threatened by the development. This is considered less of a problem in China, for better or worse, and so things move quite a bit faster. Another problematic hold-up endured by developers in the West concerns the purchase of land, which is often prohibitively expensive and can condemn even well-run projects to years or even decades of slugging it out in the courts. In China, again, the situation is very different. If the government decide it wants the land, it simply takes over the lease. Compensation is often provided, but with little or no right of appeal. Fundamentally, the nature of electoral politics means Western leaders are often reluctant to sign off on potential
potentially unpopular schemes, like railway lines, whose benefits might not become obvious for a generation. If a big noisy construction project might upset the electorate, any politician defending a slim majority at a forthcoming election will try and duck any hard decisions. This wastes a great deal of time. In China, senior leaders on the whole don't need to answer to their electorates, at least not in quite the same way. That arrangement isn't to everybody's taste, to be sure, but China's long-termist philosophy is undeniably helpful to its construction industry. When the Chinese government announced it would spend 2.8 trillion yuan on railway infrastructure between 2016 and 2020, organizations like the Beijing Wow Joint Machinery Company knew they could confidently invest time and money developing the Iron Monster, knowing ample lucrative contracts would follow and justify all that R&D outlay. China's mighty vision for infrastructure isn't constrained within its own borders. In 2013, leader Xi Jinping announced what became known as the Belt and Road Initiative, a vast scheme designed to establish modern railways, roads and shipping lanes across great swathes of Asia, Europe and Africa. In May 2017, for example, a railway was built on the Chinese model using Chinese machines between Mombasa and Nairobi. Its sleek modern tracks marched across the Kenyan countryside at a lively clip of 700 metres per day. And the project was completed not just on time, but fully 18 months ahead of schedule. Not every construction project China undertakes is underwritten by the public sector, to be clear. The country's boom in high-rises is very much a function of private enterprise. But the booming economy and vast, rapidly urbanizing population have enabled construction firms and engineers to get pretty creative in this sphere as well. Take this so-called wall-climbing monster, also known as the skyscraper machine. Designed and built by a team of Chinese engineers who filed no fewer than eight patents realizing their brainchild, this smart 2,000-ton behemoth has already been used on multiple 100-storey-plus tower projects, not least China Zun, Beijing's tallest tower at 528 metres. Each of the wall-climbing monster's 12 hydraulic jacks is capable of bearing 400 tonnes in weight, and it builds an entire floor every three days. Oh, and it's hurricane-proof. Some critics argue China is building much too fast, if anything, pointing to a glut of so-called ghost cities across the country. They say that as the global economy sputters, many such silent towers are doomed to remain empty. However, China is betting its population will only go on growing and urbanizing, and so it's better to have all that infrastructure established in an orderly fashion rather than allow it to evolve higgledy-piggledy as in the West. Critics also point to China's less than optimal construction safety record or poor worker rights and suggest that while a hospital built in five days might look great in propaganda videos, it's unlikely to stand the test of time. Why? Poured concrete, which forms the basis of almost all modern construction, takes around 28 days to cure and dry. Accelerate that process for whatever reason and cracks are more likely to appear, which inevitably creates bigger problems down the line. By contrast, in the UK, London's Excel Convention Centre was turned into a high-tech Covid hospital in just nine days last springtime. When the pandemic ultimately passes, the Excel will go back to its former use. That's surely a far more sustainable and cost-effective proposition all round, if less eye-catching from a headline writer's perspective. Still, there's no disputing the fact that China's rapid building boom is a marvel to behold. Ambitious new New technologies infused with near bottomless budgets and an unprecedented degree of sophisticated central planning show what can be achieved when human might and ingenuity are applied to the great challenges of our age. What do you think? Is China's trade-off between representative politics and effective infrastructure programs worth it? Let us know in the comments and please don't forget to subscribe for more highly constructive tech content.